Hello Curious Minds, I'm Miles Maxer and welcome back to the Ant Network. And welcome back to another episode of Ants and Vials with Miles. Today I'm going to show you how to make one of my favorite claustral chambers for starting new ant colonies in. This is about as cheap as a test tube. And we get a lot of messages from people who aren't quite satisfied with test tubes, but they're looking for an economical way to raise ants. This might just be it for you. What I like to do is create these little claustral tubes with a hydrostone base and some sand, and then you put your queen ant in. So first things first, you're going to need an appropriate mixing bowl. I love this one because it's flexible. You can make sure everything is mixed and you can get any kind of plaster that cakes on the outside off of it really easily. But any kind of suitable mixing container will do just fine. I also like to have a spoon for mixing the hydrostone. We also have some sand. We'll use that later on in this tutorial. And then we've got some hydrostone plaster. I've already incorporated the dyes that we use to make the hydrostone look like a soil color. And as a reminder, all of the products that we use in our online demonstrations are linked down below in the video description. We also have some distilled water here with a pipette and two different types of vials. These are both plastic vials. If you use a glass vial, you risk the glass shattering as the hydrostone expands during the curing process. So here's how to mix hydrostone appropriately for this particular project. Remember, on average, you're going to use one part water to three parts hydrostone. But when you're doing a vial like this, we wanna make sure we have a pretty thin hydrostone slurry. So we're gonna go for something about the maple syrup consistency. Just put a little bit of water in our dish. And also another thing that you should remember is that hydrostone goes into water. You never put water into dry hydrostone powder. So we'll add a bit of powder to this mixing bowl. And I'll just begin to incorporate that powder into the water like this. It's normal to not get the perfect proportion right away, but once you've mixed hydrostone a few times, you'll really have a good understanding of the thickness and the consistency that you're looking for. So right now our consistency is far too thin and I've added some more powder. What we're looking for is something more like maple syrup. And as you mix hydrostone, as a ant keeper, you will start to learn exactly the kinds of consistencies that you want for different projects. So this is still too thin. We're gonna add a little bit more powder. It's a lot smarter to just add a little bit of powder at a time rather than quite a bit because you could end up overdoing it and then you end up wasting hydrostone. We'll continue mixing just like this and we'll notice it's still a little too thin, but we're definitely getting closer to the consistency that we're looking for. So as you're mixing the hydrostone, you're looking for a consistency like maple syrup. Hydrostone sets up uh, faster if you use warm water and you'll have more working time if you use cool water. I like to use cool water for projects like this, especially if I'm going to be making like a dozen or two dozen vials. So you have a longer working time with a cooler water. So this is much closer to what we're looking for. I'm just gonna add a little bit more hydrostone to this mixture, mix it in, and then we will be ready to pour it into our plastic vials. Now, you can see that I'm hand mixing this hydrostone. That's because we're doing a very small batch. But if you're going to do a large batch of hydrostone for maybe a large formicarium, you're going to wanna to use an electric mixer to make sure that all of the powder is incorporated evenly throughout the mixture. All right, this is the perfect consistency. So I'm going to move our vials over here and we just remove the caps, get our funnel, put it in here. And I like to spoon the hydrostone into the funnel because it gives you the most control over the amount that you put in. Now, hydrostone expands, like I said earlier, during the curing process. So you wanna make sure that you don't put too much and too thick of hydrostone, which will cause it to shatter. But this is about perfect, anywhere from a quarter of an inch to a little more than half an inch in depth, and that'll be perfect for what we're doing today. We'll transfer this over and do the little vial now, and that's perfect just like that. This next step is optional, but I certainly prefer to do it. We have some sand here. It's a very fine, nice sand. We've sterilized it already and we're going to sprinkle it on top of the hydrostone before it cures. This will give us a really nice texture. You wanna be careful when you're adding sand because if you put too much, it will dry out the hydrostone before it's cured, and by pulling the water out of it, it will interrupt that curing process. 
So just a light sprinkle is perfect. And these are ready to go. So now we're going to allow these to cure for at least half of an hour. Uh, hydrostone does get hot during that process, and you want to make sure that you don't start using these vials until after that heat has dissipated and it is fully cured. Now that the hydrostone has cured, we've lost a lot of water in that process, and we need to replenish it before we prepare this for a queen. We'll just take our pipette and add a few drops to the surface of the hydrostone plaster. Now we need to poke some holes in the top for ventilation, otherwise the ants would eventually suffocate. I've got this fancy little hole poker, but you can use lots of different instruments just around the house. And there we go. We have prepared a claustral chamber for a queen. This uses about the same uh, cost of materials as a test tube, and in my opinion, it works just as well. One of the things that I like to do when I prepare vials like this is have a box handy with a moist paper towel. And what you can do is put your vials with the queens inside into these boxes. Now, as the water evaporates in the box, the humidity uh, increases, and it can be maintained inside of the box much easier than if the vials are just sitting out on a shelf. So you can put the lid on, and you just want to make sure you have a slight gap so that you can have air move through that unit. You can apply the same concept to what we just did here with a much larger jar. So this is great for pleometrosis or polygonous queens. This is when you have multiple queens inside a single founding chamber. And this also works for a small growing colony. I hope you learned something with this tutorial and that your colonies are successful. If your queens are able to create a small colony with multiple workers, you can then move them into a formicarium. Simply remove the lid, place it in the formicarium, and the ants will generally move out on their own. For more ant keeping tutorials and adventures, make sure you're subscribed to the Ant Network. And if you really want to help us out, leave a like and a comment down below. Thanks for watching.